And in today's one-on-one -on -one interview, we talk with Dr. Michael Lewicki, who is director of the New Mexico Clinical Research and Osteoporosis Center. And uh, he also serves as director of the University of New Mexico program called Bone Health Teleecho. It's a virtual program that is designed to train physicians on how best to treat osteoporosis patients. And in this interview, we cover how the program works, why it's needed, and how you as a physician can launch one in your state. I hope you enjoy the discussion. Background, mm -hmm. uh, osteoporosis is a major public health concern. Uh, in the U.S., there's probably about 54 million individuals who have osteoporosis or, or low bone density who are at risk for having uh, fractures. And despite the fact that we have good uh, methods for diagnosing osteoporosis even before a fracture occurs, and we have uh, effective, low-cost, safe treatments to reduce fracture risk, uh, these treatments are not being used as effectively as they should be. And, and most patients at risk for osteoporosis are currently uh, not being tested. Uh, most of them, uh, even the ones who are at very high risk for fracture, are not being treated to reduce fracture risk. And this constitutes a very large osteoporosis treatment gap, and it's it's been called a crisis in the care of osteoporosis, not just in the US, but worldwide. So it's a, a challenge to the healthcare community to do better at identifying and treating patients appropriately. And, and that's where Project ECHO comes in. Uh, Project ECHO was uh, created actually by a gastroenterologist at University of New Mexico who was frustrated because uh, patients with chronic hepatitis C in rural parts of New Mexico were not receiving treatment. Uh, the primary care doctors didn't know how to do it. The patients were too far from the medical center to come in and it was too expensive and, and too time consuming. So he got the idea that he could uh, use a, a video uh, linkage with primary care doctors uh, that they could discuss uh, real patient cases with each other um, that the primary care providers could learn from the hepatitis uh, specialists and um, learn how to take care of their own patients uh, right in their own office. And uh, in 2011, the results of this um, study were published in New England Journal of Medicine, and they showed that uh, primary care doctors educated through Project ECHO uh, ended up taking care of hepatitis C patients as well as or better than the GI clinic at the university. And it has really gone viral uh, since that time, uh, in a sense, uh, the concept of Project ECHO has been applied uh, to uh, uh, many disease states and uh, ECHO programs have popped up in uh, many cities, many hospitals and universities around the country and around the world. So, uh, this gets us to bone health tele-echo. In uh, about five years ago, um, I uh, came up with the idea that uh, perhaps osteoporosis is somewhat similar to chronic hepatitis C. It's a, a common chronic disease that is uh, being undertreated despite good treatments being available. So we started up our bone health tele-echo program and uh, we've held it uh, every week since uh, five years ago. Uh, it now goes an hour and a half each time. And the program consists of having a short slide presentation followed by discussion, then several case presentations with discussion of those cases. And we all learn from discussing the cases and discussing the, uh, the presentation. It's very collegial, it's uh, highly interactive. Uh, it's um, not a webinar. Uh, a webinar is typically a lecture online with limited opportunity for uh, interaction. Uh, it's not telemedicine. This is not about one doctor taking care of one patient who's located somewhere else. It's all about elevating the level of knowledge of healthcare professionals to a higher level and allowing them to take better care of their patients with skeletal diseases uh, closer to home with greater convenience and lower cost then referral to a specialty center. Mm -hmm. And uh, our Bone Health Tele-Echo program has just um, uh, blossomed over the years. 
Uh, when we first started, we averaged about 15 people participating each time. Uh, now it's typically 60 to 100 people uh, participating each time. And other Bon Echo programs have started up. Uh, there's a, a number of them uh, around the country and in other countries. Uh, some are focused on fracture liaison programs. Some are targeting orthopedic surgeons. Um, there's one on rare bone diseases that meets once a month and has been very, very popular. There's a bone echo program in Galway, Ireland, uh, and there's one in Moscow, Russia. And uh, my, uh, my dream is to have more and more uh, bone health echo programs popping up around the country and around the world. Uh, ideally in a convenient time zone and the right language for the people who'd like to participate. So we could use many more uh, ECHO programs and uh, we don't want them to get too large. Uh, if they get extremely large and there's many, many people on it, it loses some of the ability to be interactive. Uh, so instead of having one program that gets bigger and bigger all the time, it'd be much better to have many ECHO programs uh, all addressing the specific needs of the people who want to participate. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's been wildly popular since it was first uh, begun with just 15 uh, physicians well, enrolled. Well, you, you know, there's been a, a, a rising tide of uh, interest uh, in uh, using this technology to educate healthcare professionals and has turned into a tsunami uh, with the onset of uh, COVID-19. And let me just give you an example of uh, how uh, COVID has had an effect on this. Uh, first of all, uh, people's schedules are a little bit more freer now, so they, uh, some people are able to sign on to ECHO when they couldn't because of clinic responsibilities before. Um, but uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the pandemic uh, here in the U.S., uh, people with uh, osteoporosis patients became concerned uh, that their patients were not able to receive the treatment they needed. Uh, bone density testing was being limited. And some people were on injectable uh, medicines where timing is very important. Uh, for example, patients treated with denosumab uh, need to receive a sub-Q injection once every six months. And if that injection is delayed by more than a month, maximum, there's a chance that bone density could start rapidly declining and fracture risk could rise. Uh, at the same time, because of COVID, some patients were reluctant to come into a physician's office to get the injection they needed. So we bounced ideas off of each other uh, during our weekly ECHO uh, meetings. And one of the ideas that came up was having uh, drive through injections for medicines like this. And in fact, we have done this at our clinic. So for patients who don't wanna come into the office, uh, they pull into the parking lot, they park in a designated parking place, they call us on the cell phone and say they're ready for their injection. And we have a nurse go out into the parking lot, the patient roll down their window, they get a shot in the arm and they go on their way and they never have to come into the office and they feel a lot safer. So this uh, idea was shared uh, with others on Bone Health Teleecho, and uh, for those who were at facilities where uh, that was something they could facilitate, then uh, that helped them out. And uh, other ideas uh, came about too. Uh, normally, before we give this injection, uh, we like to get a lab test to check uh, some things like the serum calcium level. Uh, and uh, uh, it was felt that in the time of echo uh, of COVID, when people are uncomfortable going into laboratories, uh, if they've been stable in the past, it might be appropriate to waive that laboratory requirement so they didn't have to go into the lab. Uh, so all kinds of other ideas were shared and that allowed rapid dissemination of knowledge. And I, I hope that uh, patients ultimately benefited from sharing that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'll see um, that they have benefited, as I'm sure you'll do follow-ups and uh, studies to see um, how, how well um, things went during this period, during COVID-19, um, uh, the drive-through, I think we called it drive-through medicine the last time we spoke, <laughs> something along those lines. Um, but with TeleEcho, um, how does a physician enroll 
and if a physician wanted to host the session or start one in their region, how, how, how would that work? Well, there uh, are uh, a lot of resources available uh, to enroll in uh, our particular bone health tele-echo program. Uh, you can go to the website of the Osteoporosis Foundation of New Mexico, uh, which is at www.ofnm.org. Uh, there is a University of New Mexico uh, ECHO webpage that lists all of the uh, ECHO programs worldwide. And uh, it gives information about the, the day of the week, the time of day, and the language uh, for that ECHO. Uh, so uh, some people might find that one ECHO program is uh, more compatible with their schedule than another. And now I would love to have more uh, bone ECHO programs start up. Uh, if anybody listening to this is passionate about sharing knowledge and loves to uh, teach and has some organizational skills, uh, Doing uh, ECHO is a great way to use those skills and share your knowledge and help with patient care. Uh, there is a immersion training that is provided for free by the University of New Mexico, which involves uh, online training at, at no cost. It, it goes on for several days, actually, that will provide you with uh, the skills you need to uh, learn how to start up an ECHO program. And uh, it can be done from anywhere. There are uh, ECHO uh, programs that are run in Africa, for uh, example, uh, linking physicians in small villages. Uh, as long as they have internet access, they can log on with a smartphone and uh, link up with other physicians in other small villages in Africa. And uh, uh, when we started ECHO, I used to go to the ECHO building at the University of New Mexico where we had a video conferencing center and there were several other people in the room with me. Uh, since COVID-19 has started, uh, I don't do that anymore. I sit at this computer uh, right where I am now and uh, everybody else is located in their, uh, in their own home or office and uh, they're looking at their computers or their cell phone and we do it that way. So. Uh, it can be done uh, with great convenience and, and at low cost. Um, the main expense actually for starting up an ECHO program is to have a staff person to help out. You know, we provide free CME, for example, uh, when we do it, we need a staff person to take uh, attendance to uh, help with uh, uh, processing the evaluations and getting the CME, uh, reminding uh, participants about how to log on each time, uh, getting uh, ECHO speakers to uh, understand how to log on, to get their disclosure uh, information, and to just handle all the lo logistics for making it happen. And we figure that on average, it takes this staff person about uh, 10 hours of time to uh, do everything necessary for each one of the ECHO uh, programs. Mm -hmm. And having somebody uh, doing that uh, greatly eases uh, the job of uh, the moderator. So when I moderate an ECHO session, for example, uh, I can focus on the science and the uh, communications and interactivity of it. And I've got somebody else uh, taking attendance and uh, managing any uh, problems that uh, come up with technology or uh, logistics while the program is going on. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a much needed program, not only here in the U.S., but obviously uh, all over the world. Um, how many echo, bone echo programs are there in the country? Well, uh, we have one uh, based in Michigan. We have one in Chicago. Uh, we have one in Washington, D.C. Um, a rare bone disease echo program is uh, run from uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland by the Osteogenesis Imperfecta Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have one yet on the West Coast. Uh, I think it would be nice to get an echo program uh, somewhere on the West Coast that would be uh, convenient for people located there. Well, definitely, yeah, at least one per state, you know, given the need, you would <laughs> we think certainly, that, yeah. We certainly could. Yeah, yeah, they would be in demand for certain, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, do you have any closing comments you'd like to leave us with? 
Well, I, I think the, the, the goal of everybody uh, taking care of patients with osteoporosis is to prevent broken bones. And uh, I think we can do that better if we all uh, elevate our level of knowledge. What we found with ECHO is that everybody seems to get something out of it. So we have beginners, we have experts, we have all different specialties, we have nurse practitioners and, and PAs. And I learn something uh, every time we have an echo session and I, I hope everybody else does it well. Uh, it's fun, it, it's educational, and in the long run, I think it helps patients and uh, I hope prevents fractures. Well, thank you, thank you, well said, yeah. So uh, I appreciate your time and again, best of luck to you. Okay, well, thank you for having me.